Welcome to a special episode of the Lamont Experience, brought to you by Boston Cannabis Week and produced by Experience Creative. And as always, shout out to Boston Hemp Company and the good folks at MCR Labs. <laughs> With me today, my two guests on our first special, our first Halloween episode, are two of my favorite comedians in all the world. Very, very funny. Some of the funniest people you'll ever meet. Deadly funny, I might say. <laughs> That's a pun. My first guest is one of the funniest young comedians in the country. You can see her on her own show, The Rehash, Friday nights on Twitch. I'll be on, the, I'll be on, on Friday. Please welcome Tuki Kavanaugh. Hello. My other guest, I call him uh, my nostalgia hero. One of the funniest comedians in the land. He has his own awesome podcast that I've been a guest on numerous times called TV Guidance Counselor. Check that out as well. Please welcome my other guest, Ken Reed. How are you? We doing knives? Uh, we doing, if you we want to. The whole time? We are doing knives the whole time. <laughs> nice. I wanted to, no. I, wanted to set a, I wanted to set a spooky precedent. So well, I got sounded, like, my background. You sounded just like Jason. Did I? That's how we talk. It's exactly like he said. Yeah, that's how I'm. My costume is uh, it's from a an unreleased Friday the 13th movie. As you can see, I have the uh, lab coat and the stethoscope. This is from Friday the 13th. Jason goes to medical school. If you're not mm -hmm. aware of that one, that's the one. It got scrapped. That's the one where Jason graduated from the, at the top of his class and then started working a residency at Crystal Lake Hospital and. You know, along the way, he finds love. It's a it's a romantic comedy. Aww. That's what like I'm just saying. It's like Scrubs. Like he's already, It's he's exactly already, like Scrubs. He's clearly a surgeon. It, <laughs> yes, that's why he has this. Anytime, anytime they're in a jam in surgery, they go, "We need Jason," and he comes in and he whacks and he hacks. Um, but that's my costume. Let's go around the horn, Tuki. What is your ensemble? Um, I'm. I'm portraying the first Slayer from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So, ah. Because the, the first Slayer um, was a, a black woman. I don't know if you knew. No, they don't tell us that stuff. I'm glad <laughs> you told me. But um, I had no idea. Because I've never seen the movie and I never watched the TV show. My brother loved the TV show. Yeah. But he, he probably knows that. But I never watched the show or the movie. So uh, I, I didn't know. I'm, I learned something. Yeah, I'm in the middle of finishing the series because I never watched um, when it aired back in the yeah. day. Um, you know, I would watch whatever was on the WB and then switch because it just didn't appeal to me. But uh, uh, you mean Dawson's Creek because you're you're trying to play down that Dawson's Creek was on before Buffy, just calling I'm, it whatever's on the air. Ken, I'm not about that. Life. <laughs> 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 but, like she knows exactly what was on before. Like she knows <laughs> whatever was. She was I watching know. it. She likes anyway. Pacey. She still got a thing for Pacey. Yeah. Well, we don't talk about that. But my my partner's family was like really, really into it, especially his younger brother. Um, yeah. So when it started airing on Hulu, he was like, you got to watch with me. So I live tweet every episode as we watch throughout the season. Oh, so we're, uh, okay. Yeah, we're about to be on so, season six, if I'm not mistaken. So just out of curiosity, this, this black vampire slayer, um, is it like the first episode where they show this person? No, this is deep into the series when Buffy has to have like, I don't know, psychic ayahuasca visions to find herself. Uh, she finds the first slayer and it turns out she... So of... some, so somewhere in the middle of the series, the network was like, listen, we need some diversity in this motherfucker. Yeah. Can you please find somebody? Can you, can you force a black character? Because, because, because the diversity they gave us before was yeah. Kendra the Vampire Slayer, who uh, was supposed to be from the Caribbean, and she had a very Miss Cleo accent, and I slay vampires, and it was just very cringe. Who so, played that character? 
<laughs> Allegedly, Beyonce's cousin. That's her name. That's, that would, that's that would be my name. I don't remember her actual um, name, but I, I would sign all my bank. I would sign all my my checks. Beyonce's cousin. I would be like, yeah, I'm Beyonce's cousin. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't need a name. By, wouldn't she go by because? You know, I don't. But, know. but you gotta gotta be obvious of it. Oh, okay. So there's that, Ken. Yeah. You got anything special you're wearing, or you just kind of come as you are? I'm you got a very, you, uh, you got a very uh, public enemy number one thing going on right now, like a very. Uh, Is that what I look like? You know, am I thinking of the right? No, James Dean. You got a very James Dean, uh, not public enemy number one. Uh, what's the James Dean without uh, a flick? Cause. Rebel without, without a cause. cause. Yeah. Yeah. Or the wild one with. Uh, or the wild one. Yeah, maybe that's the one you're thinking of. That's just kind of how I always look. I totally forgot about the costume. And I, I just wore my Oingo Boingo shirt and my uh, Pee Wee Herman Loner Rebels hoodie. So you came dressed as 1987. Yeah, so pretty much like I always dress. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, you'll get no beef out of me. I mean, I could so I wear wanna... a luchador mask if you wanted. Ooh, I kind of want to see up it. To you you want to see a luchador mask? I do want to see it. Uh, you want you want an Ultraman one or, or a monster oh. one? Oh damn! I was gonna. I was ready to go with Ultraman, but it's Halloween. Let's go, monster. Okay, give me one sec. There's the monster mask. There you go. I like that. That looks cool. So thank you guys for being on our Halloween episode. And as you can see, I have my Halloween setup in the background. I have my uh, Will Smith with the hockey mask on. I have the fireplace for my little. Halloween fireside chat situation. I got a creepy doll that I had to return once because it wouldn't stop talking. And I have a creepy clown in the background as well. I don't know which way this machete is pointing, but if you can see the back, you can see the back. And I wanted to talk to you guys because A, you're two of my favorite people and comedians. And also, I know you both love Halloween as oh, much yeah. as I do. And I have a, a few specific topics that I would like to get into. And I'll start with Trick-or-treating. Do you guys have a specific trick-or-treat story that you can remember and you'd like to tell? Ladies first. Oh, okay. Well, uh, a couple... It was, yeah, 20, 2018, mm. when I was still sort of kind of... When you were 17! No, what? <laughs> okay. Um Sir, I don't know if you know anything about vampires, but we're ancient creatures. So anyway, uh, yeah. So this was back when I was sort of moving out-ish from my parents' house. Almost completely moved out, but I would still like stay over for, I don't know, a couple days or something. Because um, I'm an only child and my mom loves me. So I was hanging out at my parents' house around Halloween time, and there's this one street in the neighborhood that the city blocks off to do a block party for like the entire street. And kids come out, people walk their dogs in costumes. It's really cool. Um, but that year, there was a neighbor who didn't get the memo who had just moved into that neighborhood. Uh, and I guess as an on the on the fly decision. They decided because they didn't they didn't rack up on candy at Costco. They decided to hand out a whole bunch of rotisserie chickens to the trick or treaters, <laughs> like individual pieces. Yeah, or? no, like yeah. whole birds. Yeah, maybe hilarious. Like whole actual bird. children just walking around with plastic containers with the whole bird in it. How many do you think they gave out? In oh, the yeah. like thirty. I don't. <laughs> Honestly, that sounds that sounds awesome and also really selfish at the same time because after thirty kids. They're like, wait a minute, there's a chicken house? Yeah. I want to go to the chicken yeah. house. <laughs> we all love the chickens, man. It was just the weirdest. It was for anybody, you know, well, I mean, it's Boston Cannabis Week, and, and y'all know Cambridge. Cambridge has some weird pockets, and that was the weirdest but also most Cambridge thing I had seen in the entirety of the time that I'd lived there. See, I was thinking it would be like Tofurky since it's Cambridge. Nah, man, they, <laughs> they handed out the birds. It was, it was. Odd. You ever seen an Elsa from Frozen just walking around with a rotisserie chicken? It's just, it's odd. Not since high school. Is it, yeah, yeah. You guys eat real meat in Cambridge? Well, I mean, in general, it's really strange to have a savory on Halloween and at all. That's not a, yeah, it's not a thing. You don't even. I mean, honestly, as a kid, I didn't even like the fact that we had to eat dinner. Like, yeah. why, why are we eating rice 
on All Hallows Eve. This is not the night for rice. But I'm just thinking, like, y'all went to Costco and you could have racked up on the... Did they run out of the candy at Costco and that's why you decided to get chicken? I'm thinking... Think some... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. I was just saying that uh, I think that sometimes people try to get special Okay. on Halloween. I'm going to be different than the candy houses. I guess. See, I'm wondering if they weren't from the United States and, like... They went to Costco and they're like, what do we give out on Halloween? And some asshole was like, oh, chickens. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, it's traditional. And then just pranked them. Come Damn. to think of it, come to think, 2018? Yeah. I was at Costco in 2018 and this Russian dude was like, you know, I can't do an accent, but hey, what should I give out on Halloween? What, what do you guys do in America? And I was like, chicken. Oh, yeah, it makes it, sense because like you're scaring people and they're chicken, you know. God, if it turned out to be my neighbor who you talk to. Yeah, uh, Sergey. That'd be beautiful. Is it Sergey? That'd be beautiful. I don't, I don't know, because I, I hate all my neighbors, no matter where I am. Uh, well, that is certainly an interesting uh, trick or treat thing. Ken, what about you? Uh, we had a guy in my neighborhood named Eddie Murphy, who was not. <laughs> that Eddie Obviously. Murphy. He was an old guy from Maine and he wore a train conductor uniform uh, all the time, but he didn't have a job. <laughs> and every Halloween <clears throat> he would come out dressed as the, I think it was the Coors Light Werewolf, uh, which was a very short lived because of the silver bullet thing. And he had this rubber mask and rubber hands and he'd come out into the street and he'd light a road flare and then he'd do a lap around the block and jam the road flare into this uh, telephone pole. And then he would throw full-size Reese's peanut butter cups, like just in the air and all over the street and yell fuckers. Okay. <laughs> just, Unwrapped or wrapped? No, they were wrapped. <laughs> okay. And he'd just, he'd just yell, fuckers! Ah! And then he'd go in his house. And that was like how we started Halloween every year. Oh, that's, that's really insane. Oh. Wow, and yeah, how does it, how like how does how does your parents like how does everyone else's family or everyone else's parents react to that guy? So they'd all be like, "Don't go out yet, don't go out yet." And then as soon as you went inside, they were like, "Go," because those are full size. Go, go. Because that guy sounds very uh, flash the neighborhood at the drop of a hat. You know what I mean? Like that guy sounds like that kind of guy. Oh yeah, he was kind of like Fred Gwynn in Pet Cemetery. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes dad is better. Like he was that kind of guy. And he had, he had three dogs and they were all named Charlie. And we don't know wait, if he knew. Wait. Yeah. We don't know if he knew he had three dogs or if he intentionally named them all the same. So basically you've in some weird way been around comedians your entire life because comedians, yeah, you know, kind of like weirdos. Yeah. Eddie Murphy, you know, I grew up with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> I mean, that's not a lie. That's a lie. Well, for me, when I was like 11, you know, I grew up in Dorchester. And um, in Dorchester, there's like certain areas where there are all these old Victorian houses. And um, we would always trick or treat there. We trick or treat in multiple neighborhoods, not just our own, because, you know, more candy for our pillowcase. So we're on this one trek and we get to this one house and um, guy answers the door. And I think he was in his early, mid-20s. or I mean, at the time, at 11, that guy, he could have been 100 as far as we were concerned. But younger younger guy for a house like that, you know? And he's like, hey, kids, welcome in. And we're all like, yeah, trick or treat. And he, he welcomes us into the house. He's like, come on in. And we're not smart enough to be like, that's not a good idea. So we walk into this house, and it was kind of dimly lit, you know? And I could see the flicker of candles. But he had a table with about six or seven bowls on it, and all of them had full-size candy bars. And that's all we cared about, right? And he, then he said, then he said, help yourself. Help yourself. So we just start, you know, shoving this candy into our pillowcases. But then I happen to look around, and I see maybe five other people around the same age, guys and girls, no furniture, by the way. They were all sitting on the floor, and there were candles, you know? And I don't know what they were doing. I, it, as an adult now, it looks very seancey, but 
they're sitting there and they're all smiling and they're looking at us. And then the guy who let us in says, hey, kids, listen, we're new to this neighborhood. Um, we're always looking to make new friends and we're open. Our house is open. If you want to come by any time and talk or anything you need, if you need something to eat, feel free to come by and see us. And then I was just like, I had nothing to say. But my friend Charles said, and I quote, fuck that shit. <laughs> and he ran out of the house. <laughs> and I, I was still shoving candy into my bag. And I'd had like five more handfuls. And then I dipped out. I dipped out the house as well. And we never went back to that house again. I don't know what happened to those people. They might have been arrested because I never saw them again. Did they say new to the neighborhood or nude? <laughs> well, I remember it as new, but who knows? In that kind of house with no furniture and all those candles, mm. anything is possible. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. And full-size candy bars with no full string. Full-size with no strings. Oh, oh, no. There's always a string. Like there's all, I always yeah. said, that's how you kidnap me, man. That's how you get me. Even now, if you have full-size bars... I'm going to get in your van. I'm going to get in your van. No problem. Lamont. Yep. Lamont. Let's, what? Even as an adult? I'm gone, baby. Wait, I had wait. a good run. Any kind of full size or like specific? Well, it depends. It depends. Charleston if you Chew? Got, hell no. I'll, if you get, let me tell you something. If you give me a Charleston Chew, I'm turning your house into a fucking Western omelet. You understand me? A Charleston Chew... I got a whole, that's a whole other episode we can rant about my hatred of just Nougat having the audacity to think they could just stand alone. You need help, Nougat. Nougat, you just can't be out here on your own. You need, a, you need a plan, Nougat. You need some nuts. You need some caramel. You need something. You can't just be Nougat and think I'm going to be like, oh, cool, Nougat. What if it's Nougat? I don't know what our next doing. topic. <laughs> <laughs> our next topic is uh, your favorite or the Halloween commercial you feel is the creepiest you've ever seen, or any creepy commercial you want to talk about, but like a creepy commercial. Ooh, well, okay, it's not a Halloween commercial, but from my very early childhood, one of the commercials that would freak me out the most. The Cookie Puss cake commercials. I love those commercials. I am terrified. The Carvel man, like my parents try to be like, oh, he's sweet old ice cream man. I'm like, nah, like he's he's <laughs> mutilating people. Cookie Puss is the stuff of my nightmares. Wait a minute. You took you saw Cookie Puss and you said, that's an axe murderer. Like yes. that's what your impression of Cookie Puss was? Yes. Was it because the owner of Carvel did the voice and when he'd be like, here's Cookie Puss and he'd go, oh, I'm Cookie Puss. He'd do the yeah. weird voice. Yeah. I love me some Fudgy the Whale. Yeah. I love Fudgy. Could and not. Cookie. Did you see the rare Cookie Puss commercial? It was like, I'm Cookie Puss and I'm coming to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Was it that one? I remember that one. Uh, I might have blocked that out of my memory. <laughs> my favorite thing is that on St. Patrick's Day, they do Cookie Opus. Yes, I do recall that. Somehow yeah. that sounds creepier. Yeah. I, cookie cookie Opus. Puss, man. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I don't, mm, I didn't sleep well for a few years. When have, you, have you ever eaten a cookie puss? Uh, I can't, I can't bear to, I can, like I said, yep. love fudgy, could eat a fudgy, love me the fudgy the whale, but can't do cookie puss. Were That's you afraid fair. that like, if you ate cookie puss, because I feel like eating cookie puss after fearing cookie puss, uh, would give you power over Cookie Puss? Or do you think that if you ate Cookie Puss, that it would somehow it, uh, possess Possessed your body? You? Like you a know, Wendigo. Like, okay. I you're, think, you're, you're, yeah, because I interpret Cookie Puss itself as something oddly demonic, and I don't want that you know, to enter my own spirit, if you will. That's, that's comedians funny. for you. Like Comedians, we have very vivid imaginations, and so the smallest thing can get blown out of proportion, you know? Like, I had an apple, an apple with a face on it when I was a kid, and I had a nightmare that it was coming to kill me. And for since then, since I was five years old, I don't go a month without thinking about Applehead. That's what was I it like, named was it. Was it like an Applehead doll, like one of those shriveled Appleheads, or like a plastic? Just apple? a, just a, like a, it was just a head. It was just an apple with a face on it, 
Mm-hmm. It was plastic, you know, and it had the stem, the rubber stem, and and it was just I loved it. But then I had the nightmare that it was like all set with me. And then ever since then, Apple has been at my head. What about you, Ken? Though? What about you, creepy commercials? Um, I mean, I was always really, uh, really upset about the PSAs. So the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints had like two or three <laughs> that were pretty bad. Specifically uh, for Halloween. Wait. There weren't you tell Halloween. One lie yeah, leads that to one, another. Because they go into the house and there's all those people with the flashlights and they're dancing. And then he goes, I didn't really go to Jimmy's house. And then we all know the one where they make that old man a pizza and they give him milk with it, which is horrifying. Which is gross. That's yeah. wrong. Um, yeah. But there's there's two. There's a serious one that literally still haunts me to this day. And it's an AIDS PSA from 1988 that is. Okay. horrifying and i remember yeah. seeing it during an episode of mr belvedere i was up alone by myself i'm eight years old and and uh i didn't think this was a real ad for a long time because i couldn't find it and a listener of my show sent it to me and it's this camera slowly pushing into a hospital room and there's a guy in the bed who looks like a dead person like he looks like the um the sloth guy from seven and then as it gets to the guy he goes towards the camera and then it literally this is what it says it goes aids don't get it <laughs> and it's not a, i mean it's very effective but it's horrifying <laughs> i'm sorry that's the funniest thing aids <laughs> don't get it i mean like you, I could, didn't... like you could buy it at the store yeah it was terrifying and then there was another one where a guy's at a party and he's drunk and he's like a real jerk. And uh, he's like, he's going, hey, the guy is great. He's the greatest freaking guy in the world. And then he like knocks someone's drink over and they're like, watch it. And he's like, you watch it. And then he starts laughing and he goes down out of camera. And when he comes back up, he's got a jackass head, uh, like yeah. a donkey head. And then it was like, don't be a jackass. And it's like, don't drink or something. That scared me. That reminds because there was one I remember where the guy's like walking in the shadows and oh, he's like, snake. "Hey man, you know, yeah." And he, he's like, "Yeah, guys, you know, you, you'd be tempted to pick up some drugs or something like that." Oh, I don't, I remember what he said, but at the end of it, he comes out of the shadows. He's like, "Oh, you could be like me," and it's just a snake face. Yeah, and it wasn't a dealer. Halloween commercial, but it was legitimately creepy. But you guys kind of took it outside the box and went away from Halloween, which is cool. I thought they were great. I was thinking of. Uh, you know, maybe makes mine pale in comparison, but mine is the one from a couple of years ago where the woman's walking down the supermarket aisle and there's this giant plastic looking woman buying Snickers. And they're like, buy some Snickers. And it's this creepy, just this creepy. Do you guys remember this one? Yeah. It's creepy face. And then the woman's like trying to like move her carriage and the hand pulled this long, gross hand, grabs the carriage and pulls it back. And he goes, no, more Snickers. And then she bolts. And then you find out that the costume is just two, like, 10-year-olds on each other's shoulders. They come out, like, because they're just trying to get everybody to give up Snickers. Oh. It's what? Effective. That's yeah. not, I don't know if I find that very creepy. I thought it was, that, you know why I think it's creepy? Yeah, because it if you see the mask, right, if you look at the setup, and, you, and I think of it like in silhouette. I also remind, when I was a kid, I was deathly afraid of two puppets. Lady Elaine Fairchild on uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood mm-hmm. and uh, Madam from yeah, Solid similar. Gold. Both of them look yeah. like my grandmother, by the way. They're sisters, by the way. Um, those two faces, there's something about those faces that creep me out. And that, the, what, the mask and the face on the woman they were wearing was like a cross between that, those two, and Estelle Getty. There's By a, the way, uh, I'm not afraid of Estelle Getty. I love Estelle Getty, but well, not her, her combined now. with Madam is creepy. There's a Coors Light commercial that's a Night of the Living Dead parody with Joe Piscopo from when I was a mm. kid. And uh, I hated that because I hated Joe Piscopo so much. <laughs> Poor Joe Piscopo. That guy can't catch a break. We used to prank call him when I was in high school. Shout out to shout out to Dead Heat, by the way. You That's can't, a great movie. You can't make me not love Dead Heat. It's a great movie. Vincent Price's final role, aside oh. from Edward Scissorhands, it's his final like significant role. It's penultimate. Penultimate role. 
penultimate role. I'm realizing maybe I'm just creeped out by the wrong things. Maybe you're the no. only one creeped out by the right things. Because I, because I, yeah. I, you know what I think is scary as hell? Toy Story. Cookie 4. Puss. Toy Story Four specifically. Toy Story Four is a horror film. There's dummies. There's an organ harvesting scene. Like you can't tell me that that's not. Are you thinking of one of the Saw movies with Jigsaw and someone no. just told you it was Toy Story 4? Toy Story 4. <laughs> just watch this. Yeah, there's a guy in a mask and a bike. It's 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 Toy Story. And so they're like, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's Saw 4. I, 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 sorry, I told you it was Toy Story 4. Yeah. So well, you're, you're scared of, like, of cookie toys in general. Like, what about like yeah. dolls or Chucky or that kind of stuff? I would punt Chucky. Uh, mm. Not really afraid of Chucky, but like something about Toy Story 4 was just very. Very creepy. Do you ever get creeped out by stop motion? Is that was I know people that are creeped out by stop motion. No, not so much. Again, I I would punt Burger Meister, Meister, Meister Burger, any of them people. And I feel the same way about Chucky. And I feel the same way about Michael Myers at the beginning of the original Halloween, like when he killed his sister. I'm like, hmm. kick this motherfucker across the street. He's six. Like that always bothered me. It'd be so easy to get rid of that dude. All she did was go, Michael, and then let him let him go to work. He surprised her though. Like, what about Children of the Corn? I haven't seen. I'd be. I I would gladly go there and whoop everybody's ass. <laughs> Even Malachi. Oh. Wow. Seen clips. I'm not scared That's of those kids. I it, there's some genuinely creepy stuff in that movie. Right. Um, the yeah, there's some creepy stuff in that movie. I mean, if I ever, if I ever had to face their boss, all right, then I might have reservations. But those bunch of second graders, I'm not worried about them. I'm yeah. sure I can mow them down in the daytime. I'm not Isaac, going there at night. Isaac's creepy though. I mean, I get the he who walks behind the rose, but Isaac's pretty creepy. Kid preacher, weird. Lamont hey. will mow down your children. I will yep. mow down all those kids. I have a rule. Yep. I have a rule. Anytime it's a creepy situation and then like a little white girl comes out of the brush and just like, hi, play with me. <laughs> and then she like runs off <laughs> and they always go, where you going, little girl? Fuck that. Yeah, I don't find the you creepy kids die. thing. Yeah, the creepy kids thing doesn't work. Like they, if you go to like Spirit Halloween, like a lot of the animatronics, it's like a little girl like play with me forever. And I'm like, where's your parents? This one right it's here. It's not scary. Yeah. This one right here. You can't really see her face, but. That one is so creepy. Mm. And okay, finally, in our topics, we have uh, your favorite costume, Tuki. Mm, okay, this is this is. Oh man, I'm gonna alienate the audience. So you already <laughs> more have. than the cookie puss thing. Yeah, you already have. We already yeah. we've already done yeah. two. Gosh. We're editing all your stuff out. Lamont, you knew I'm problematic. Anyway. <laughs> So it's not so much that they're favorites. It's just that <clears throat> this is kind of sad, honestly, because um, my parents, okay, my parents put me uh, in not as many diverse schools. Uh, so I I got the costumes that uh, weren't reflective of characters uh, who shared my background. And it's not like race was a topic that came up so much when I was a child, but you know, we, we don't, we don't have the options. We didn't have the options then that we have today. Okay. Uh, and I grew up in a very tolerant household that didn't necessarily point out to me that my parents were two different colors, but like, that's not, a, you know, it, we love each other. Right. Um, so when I was five, at a, a school dress up day, uh, my parents gave me a Sleeping Beauty Halloween costume. It was just like a, a, a plastic poncho with the princess dress and the mask. And I thought I looked great in the mask because I didn't know I wasn't white <laughs> and we didn't have ethnic Disney princesses. So there's um, photo footage of me walking around in a Sleeping Beauty mask, just having the time of my life. I vividly remember um, people being like, go you, break boundaries, and not really getting it, just being like, give me the candy. That's uh, a... <clears throat> well, my, 
well, I yeah. would say I get to choose my costumes as an adult now, and it's like less tragic. Um, yeah. And my favorite costume as of recently was last year, I was off brand Beetlejuice. So I was, um, you know, beverage goblin, juice demon kind of thing. And I did a whole boudoir photo shoot at a comedy club in costume. Oh, that yes. sounds cool. Ken? That's a, that's a tough bar that you've raised there. Uh, the, the best costume I probably had was, um, I don't dress up that much as an adult, but I got a, a really accurate space ghost costume Ooh. about 20 years ago. And uh, I would have worn that thing every day. Like it just felt right. I was like, now, did right. you, did you, did you go traditional space ghost or did you do like Kramer and find a talk show set and do a coast to coast deal? I went traditional space ghost, so I didn't go like talk show host space ghost. But if you had thrown a setup around me, it would have worked. But I was like yeah. full on heroic space ghost with yo. Like, I, I love, I love those old space ghost cartoons. I always have been fascinated with what the sixties thought space sounded like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love the theremin. I love the theremin. Yeah. Anytime you can use a theremin, I'm all about it. Fun fact, uh, in 2014, I matched with Brock on Tinder. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How was it? Did you guys hang out? No, it never went anywhere past the DMs. So A Andy Milligan? The guy who not, plays not Brock? Not the guy, but just a photo. <laughs> so somebody just said, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. pretend that I'm Brack, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. She almost got All catfished right. by Brack. I knew, I knew what it was, but you knew you thought it was right Brack. Anyway. Stop acting like you didn't think it was really Brack. You thought you curved black. You thought you curved Brack. Man. But you, you know what? Didn't match with Zorak. A little still a little salty about that. Damn. Um, for me, when I was uh I was Freddy Krueger for like three years in a row in junior high, right? And I remember in seventh grade, um, the seventh and eighth grade classes got to go to the auditorium and they showed us a Nightmare on Elm Street part three, which I don't think would ever fly today. No. But they showed us all of it and uncut, by the way. They didn't cut anything. <laughs> there was no, it was like everything. Um, so we were in there and I was great. I was like, I got the Freddy mask, I had the gloves, and I'm sitting with my friends in our row and in front of me, was this girl I had a crush on named Shanita Moore. Shout out to Shanita if she's out there. And I didn't know, you know how you're 12, you don't know how to talk to people. So I was waiting for a tense scene in the movie, right? And I had the gloves out. And right when I knew like something ah, was coming, I looked at my friends and I gave them the, should I do the, and they both looked at me like, of course. And so I was like, cool. And right when Freddie jumped out, I had my gloves and I went ha! right on Shanita's shoulder and she hit the fucking ceiling. Yo, it was so funny. One of the hardest laughs I've ever had in my life. And then she came down and she turned around and saw me and she just started throwing punches. Like she started wailing on me, just punches for like five minutes. I never felt any of those punches because I was laughing so hard. And she didn't talk to me for like three months after that, but I would do it again. I would do it again, but Freddy Krueger was probably my most consistent costume outside of Superman. Did you have the muscle suit? No, I had that. What's the name of the guy who made those old school costumes with the plastic where you cut your ben face? Ben Cooper. Ben Cooper. I had one of those old Ben Coopers and the, the costume smelled. You could smell it for like eight years. Yeah, the trash you bag know. costumes. Damn. Yeah. So that was my favorite but guys we got a wrap we've been on for a while I just got the i got the signal i want to thank you guys for coming on and enjoying the halloween experience with me i want to thank everybody for watching ken reed you can find him at kenneth w reed on twitter and instagram and tuki kavanaugh you can find at tuki monster on twitter and in Instagram and also check out the rehash with Tuki on Twitch and check out TV Guidance Counselor with Ken Reed, TV Guidance .com. I've been Lamont Price. This has been the Lamont Experience. Shout out to Experience Creative and as always, elevate the culture. <laughs>